from Isabella Island. We started our day with a classic backpacker breakfast of bananas and Nutella sandwiches full of absolutely zero nutrients, but cheap and yummy. And now we have just rented a couple of fat tire bikes for $10 each for the day. And we are headed to a place called Muro de las Lagrimas, which translates to Wall of Tears. Apparently this is another great place to spot some wildlife, so we're gonna go check it out. just registered ourselves and the whole process was completely free so you don't have to worry about that should you come here. Where this entrance leads you is here. If you park between here and the wall then clearly there are a bunch of different points of interest that you can enjoy along the way. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to trundle along on our bikes and see what we can find.
we're about 600 meters away from the Wall of Tears, which is our final destination. But we've just come to this amazing viewpoint where we have views of the ocean, as well as the arid zone that we've been biking through with all the cacti below. I just want to say that I feel like this journey to get to Wall of Tears is almost the destination for me because it has completely exceeded my expectation. I did not realize how scenic it was going to be. It's just been gorgeous to bike along the coast of Isabella Island with like the blue water and crashing waves on one side and then the volcanic rock and all the beautiful cacti on the other side. It has been absolutely stunning and far exceeded my expectations for this five kilometer, by the way, bike ride to the Wall of Tears. Yeah, it's been a bit more intense a journey than I thought it would be. It turns out there's quite a lot of steep up and downs, but the fact that we've been able to be treated with this amazing scenery and really get to explore the island and also got a couple of bonus giant tortoises which we weren't expecting either in their natural habitat just makes this all the more special and hopefully once we get to the wall of tears then it'll be even more worth it i would recommend because it's so sandy that's what the trail is really do rent bikes with huge tires because you will need it. And even then we've had to sometimes get off of our bikes and walk them up hills. So that's just a little tip for you. Galapagos that we know today is an absolute paradise and an absolute conservation haven but when it was ceded to the Ecuadorian government back in the 1800s it wasn't necessarily seen that way. It was actually established as a penal colony back in 1832 with the islands of Floriana and San Cristobal being the first penal settlements here. Like with how the British use Australia then really it was a place for common criminals and political prisoners to be sent and unfortunately the conditions here at the time were just as bad and equally inhospitable to the prisoners and the guards that were sent with them. As a result, the first two penal colonies were shut down within the space of about 20 to 30 years. However, after the Second World War, Isabella was officially established as a third attempt at a penal colony for the Ecuadorian government. The legislation was written in 1944 and the first wave of prisoners and wardens officially landed here in 1946. However, again, the conditions were absolutely terrible and there really wasn't a lot for the prisoners to do. So as a result, literally with no other purpose than to pass the day, then this project behind us, the Wall of Tears, was set up. As a result of the horrific living and working conditions, the prisoners eventually revolted in 1958 and they killed several of the guards that were here. And finally, the Ecuadorian government actually shut this penal colony a year later in 1959. I just can't even imagine having to work all day in this heat for the sake of it, for no purpose. It's just atrocious. When you consider, like, we've been to the penal colony establishment at Port Arthur in Tasmania, and with that, obviously, there was a lot of work for the prisoners to do, but that was with the idea of making sure that there were buildings and there was actually a settlement for the prisoners to come to. But this, literally just making people build a wall for the sake of it, just seems so much less humane and so much more pointless. I just don't understand it. But thankfully, it seems like this island and the other islands around it have been properly colonized now by scientists with the aim of research and conservation. And now it's a far cry from what it used to be. It's now what you said. 
an absolute paradise. and we're headed into town to have some hopefully delicious lunch. So just to add to the fun, my back tire is busted. The tire has come off the rim. So now we're having to walk the bikes back into town. We procured a new bike and have now come into town to the same place as we ate yesterday because it was so good. Today we have maracuya or passion fruit juice and I believe we both ordered something a little bit different for lunch today. I ordered the fish in a garlic sauce and Nick, what did you get? Grilled chicken. I'm sure it'll be just as good. Cheers. After another excellent lunch, the plan now is to go to Concha de Perla, where apparently not only do we get treated to an amazing beach, but there is also another opportunity to go snorkeling. So we're just getting ready and then we'll head out soon.
just finished up at Concha del Perla and I think what was so cool is that you can see all of these animals for free. I saw a stingray or two stingrays, not sure. And one time it was like jumping out of the water, but I couldn't get any footage of it. And then the other cool thing was there was one or two sea lions that were just playing like with us. They were playing around and they were swimming up to the camera. And it was really an amazing time to be up close to them in their natural environment. So that was awesome. I heard people say that there were turtles around as well, but neither of us saw any of those. But how amazing that you can come here by yourself. You don't need a guide. It's completely free. Yeah, it was truly incredible. And I think considering a lot of the experiences that we'd had up until this point, obviously we got to swim with quite a lot of species that we hadn't before. And obviously a lot of those were very unique, but the sea lion was one that we had not checked off yet. So yeah, just the fact that it was so curious about us, it came right up to us so many times and was just so playful. It was just absolutely fantastic. Of course, there wasn't the concentration of animals here that we had seen yesterday no. in the water, but we didn't have to pay $50 for this either. Exactly. A free opportunity to go swimming with a sea lion or two is uh, not really one that you want to miss under any circumstance. So yeah, another one to check off. The one piece of advice we will give you is to rent a snorkel and mask in town before you get here because there isn't anywhere close by that you can get one last minute. Yeah, agreed. Um, definitely make sure that you have prepared ahead of time, otherwise, yeah, you may end up having to go back on yourself to get yourself a snorkel mask and no one wants to do that, let's be fair. I think we're pretty exhausted from the day though. The sun has taken it out of us both. So we're just gonna head back to the hotel now. A long day, but a great day. And we will look forward to catching up with you on the next great, but possibly long day. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.